Ever wondered what makes your computer work? What magic happens inside those chips and circuits? Well, Transistor Transistor Logic, or TTL, is one of the unsung heroes behind the scenes. TTL is a type of digital logic family that was widely used in the design of integrated circuits for many years. It was one of the earliest logic families and played a significant role in the development of computers and digital systems. At the heart of TTL circuits are bipolar junction transistors, or BJTs. These little wonders, which come in two flavors, NPN and PNP, are used to implement logic gates and other circuit elements. They are the building blocks that enable the complex digital worlds we interact with daily. Imagine a world without TTL. It would be like a city without its infrastructure. TTL, like the roads, bridges and power lines in a city, helps facilitate the flow of information in our digital devices. So, what makes TTL tick? Let's delve into its characteristics. First off, TTL circuits are built on the solid foundation of bipolar junction transistors, or BJTs for short. These include both NPN and PNP types, and they're the workhorses that implement logic gates and other vital circuit elements. Next up, we have voltage levels. Standard TTL operates with a power supply voltage of 5 volts. And when it comes to logic levels, we're typically looking at high or logic 1, in the range of 2 to 5 volts and low or logic 0, from 0 to 0.8 volts. One of the hallmarks of TTL is its relatively brisk switching speed. This fast-paced dance allows for quick transitions between logic states, keeping the rhythm of digital communication flowing smoothly. Then there's the fan-out. This term refers to the number of standard TTL inputs that a TTL output can drive without breaking a sweat. Fanout values vary across different TTL families, but it's a key metric of the system's performance. TTL also boasts good noise immunity, thanks to its use of differential signal processing. By leveraging differential amplification, it can effectively reject common mode noise, keeping your digital signals clean and clear. However, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. One of the drawbacks of TTL is its relatively high power consumption, especially when compared to later logic families like CMOS. When driving multiple loads, power dissipation can add up, making for a thirsty system. And let's not forget the logic gates. Standard TTL includes the basic lineup of AND, Oregon, NAND, NOR, XOR and NOT gates. These gates can be combined in all sorts of ways to create more complex digital circuits, offering a versatile toolkit for digital design. TTL, with its unique characteristics, has been a game-changer in the field of digital systems. Now, let's decode the logic gates that form the building blocks of TTL. First off, we have the AND gate, often represented by the number 7408 in TTL. It's a gate with multiple inputs that produces a high output only when all inputs are high. Think of it like a team project. Everyone needs to contribute their part for the project to succeed. Next is the OR gate, or 7432 in TTL. This gate produces a high output if at least one input is high. It's like a buffet. As long as you have one dish you like, you're good to go. The NOT gate, or 7404, is a bit different. It inverts the input signal. It's the contrarian of the group, always going against the grain. Then we have the NAND gate, represented by 7400. This gate produces a low output only when all inputs are high. It's like an all or nothing scenario. Either everyone participates, or no task gets done. The NOR gate, or 7402, produces a low output if at least one input is high. Picture a quiet library. If one person speaks loudly, the silence breaks. Finally, the XOR gate, represented by 7486, produces a high output when the number of high inputs is odd. It's like casting a vote. An odd number of votes can tip the scale in favor of one side. These gates are not just standalone entities. They are often combined in various configurations to create more complex digital circuits. It's like building a house. You start with bricks, cement, and wood, but how you combine them determines whether you get a bungalow, a mansion, or a skyscraper. The versatility of TTL logic gates is the key to its widespread use in digital circuits. TTL has evolved over time, giving rise to several variants. Each of these offshoots was designed to address specific needs in the realm of digital electronics. First, we have low-power TTL, abbreviated as LPTTL. 
As the name suggests, this variant was developed with the aim of reducing power consumption. It does this by reducing the current drawn from the power supply, making it an ideal choice for battery-operated devices. Next up is high-speed TTL or HSTTL. The need for speed led to the development of this variant. HSTTL circuits were designed to switch between logic states more rapidly than standard TTL, allowing for faster data processing. Then we have the Schottky TTL, also known as STTL. This variant uses Schottky diodes to achieve even faster switching speeds than HSTTL. The use of these diodes in the transistors helps to prevent them from entering the saturation state, thereby reducing the time taken to switch them off. But these variants weren't merely academic exercises. TTL and its offshoots found practical applications in a wide array of digital systems. They played a pivotal role in the design of early computers and microprocessors. In the golden age of mainframe computers, TTL was the logic family of choice. It was used to implement the logic gates and circuits that formed the building blocks of these computing behemoths. TTL also found its way into microprocessors, the heart of modern computing devices. Early microprocessors, like the Intel 4004 and 8008, were built using TTL-integrated circuits. And it wasn't just computers and microprocessors. TTL was widely used in other digital systems, from calculators to digital watches, and even in the early stages of digital audio and video devices. While newer logic families like CMOS have largely replaced TTL in many applications, TTL is still found in legacy systems and educational environments. It continues to be a valuable tool for teaching the fundamentals of digital electronics. In conclusion, the TTL and its variants have made significant contributions to the evolution of digital systems. Understanding TTL logic levels is critical for decoding how TTL operates. TTL uses two distinct voltage levels to represent two states of logic, 0 and 1. A high voltage level, ranging from 2 to 5 volts, represents a logic 1, while a low voltage level, spanning from 0 to 0 0.8 volts, signifies a logic 0. Now, let's delve into the advantages and disadvantages of TTL, which like any technology, has its own set of strengths and weaknesses. First, the upsides. TTL is known for its fast switching speed, enabling it to rapidly transition between logic states. This speed is a cornerstone of its performance, making it ideal for applications requiring quick data processing. Another advantage of TTL is its impressive noise immunity. Due to the use of differential signal processing, TTL circuits can effectively reject common mode noise, ensuring reliable and accurate data transmission. However, there's no such thing as a free lunch, and TTL is no exception. One of its main drawbacks is its relatively high power consumption. This becomes particularly significant when multiple loads are driven, leading to substantial power dissipation. This high power usage is a downside particularly when compared to other logic families like CMOS, known for their energy efficiency. Another disadvantage is TTL's susceptibility to electrostatic discharge or ESD. While this is a common issue across many electronic components, it's particularly noteworthy for TTL due to the potential for damage to the delicate transistor elements within the circuits. Lastly, TTL is limited by its 5-volt power supply, which can constrain the design and functionality of more complex integrated circuits. Like everything else, TTL has its strengths and weaknesses, but its impact on digital systems is undeniable. We've journeyed through the world of TTL, but what are the key takeaways? Firstly, TTL, or transistor-transistor logic, uses bipolar junction transistors to create logic gates. It works with a power supply voltage of 5 volts, and it's known for its fast switching speed. This allows for quick transitions between logic states. Secondly, TTL includes basic logic gates such as AND, Oregon, NAND, NOR, XOR, and NOT. These gates are combined to create more complex digital circuits. Over time, variants of TTL have been developed, each addressing specific needs, including low-power and high-speed TTL. Thirdly, although TTL is known for its relatively high power consumption and limitation by the 5-volt power supply, it still offers good noise immunity and fast switching speed. It was instrumental in the design of early computers and microprocessors and continues to be relevant today, especially in educational settings. From powering our computers to shaping the digital world, TTL has truly been a revolutionary force.